Welcome back to Diet Debunk here at Hippocrates Health Institute. My name is Lindsay. I'm joined by world-renowned nutrition expert, Dr. Brian Clement, and we are going to be talking today about an interesting study that was done about superfoods for diabetes. Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to hop right in. So this, um, this article was placed by Medical Daily, and what they said was there was, um, this is a recent article that was published about what superfoods should really benefit you if you were someone that has diabetes, what you should be eating and incorporating into your diet. And this is nothing new here to us at Hippocrates. I mean, Brian, we've heard some crazy things about what people should be doing as diabetics compared to what we know, right? What's something crazy you've heard about uh, well, the diabetes? You know, the, the biggest one is that they talk about low glycemic fruits. Uh, what we have a found fruit. here, fruit, yeah. Okay. <laughs> fruit is a fruit and sugar is a sugar. And uh, when people come here with type two diabetes and they adhere to the program, 100% of them can reverse their so-called disease. It's a lifestyle problem, it's not a disease. And we take away 100% of all sugars. And sadly, that's one that we can debunk completely. Okay, well, that's yeah. good to know. So no sugars here, um, even in the fruit. So uh, what's interesting is, so the CDC, um, they reported that there was 34.2 million cases of diabetes um, in 2020. And so this is, you know, this is a lot of people that we're talking about here. And so what exactly is diabetes? You might be asking yourself in case you don't know. Well, diabetes is simply um, a disease that happens when your pancreas is no longer able to produce the amount of insulin needed to keep your blood sugar regulated. You know, uh, a lot of people hear the, the word insulin and they're thinking that it's coming from this, um, this pharmaceutical drug, which does happen, but our, our bodies actually naturally produce insulin. And so, um, you know, when your pancreas can no longer keep up with the sugar you're consuming, um, it, it starts to fail. So Brian, what are your thoughts? Well, what's really interesting is that diabetes almost never is a sugar problem first. It's an animal fat consumption problem. Mm. Now, one of the most important fuels and foods for the cell is glucose. Uh, even lettuce has a form of glucose in it that literally is necessary for you to have energy. Yeah. And these are complex carbohydrates that your body completely, absolutely needs. Now, what happens when you take animal fat in, as you know, Lindsay, you smother the cell. Mm -hmm. Now, what can happen? The glucose or the sugar can't enter the cell and be burned up. So it remains in the bloodstream. That's why we call it blood sugar disease. And so it's not that you need insulin, it's that you're not regulating insulin. And the only way that allopathic mainstream doctors know how to deal with it is to give you something that they don't find enough of in your body. That's really interesting. So what you're saying is that our cells are basically putting on these raincoats of animal fat that's, right. that's repelling <laughs> our, um, our sugars from being able to be regulated that way, correct? Beautiful way to say it. Okay. Raincoats of animal fat. Of animal fat. Sounds Boy, disgusting. That sounds like you know, something that uh, Lady Gaga would wear. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, so going along with with this um, and what happens with diabetes. So, in terms of the long term effects of diabetes, um, the damage to large blood vessels um, of the heart, brain, and the legs, especially um, macrovascular complications. This is a big problem for people with diabetes. In addition, the damage to the small blood vessels uh, cause problems in the eyes, the kidneys, the feet, and the nerves. Um, so, Brian, in terms of people who you've seen come. Um, um, to Hippocrates with uh, conditions related to diabetes, what have you seen personally in terms of their health challenges? Well, everything you've just mentioned is true, but it's much more gruesome and painful than you can imagine. One of the worst so-called diseases, again, I don't call it a disease, I call it a lifestyle choice, happens to be one that makes you blind. Mm. Diabetics go blind. They actually have gangrene. They cut their arm off or their leg or their toe off. Wow. Uh, the neuropathy, that's where it feels like the nerves in your body are just on fire all of the time. It's so painful, I've heard people scream. Wow. Uh, this is all correctable and all totally, absolutely unnecessary. You've got to get rid of the animal fat, take all forms of sugar out of the body, and then start to eat a nutritious diet 
that's going to fuel your body. And we're going to get into protein in just a minute. That's really an important part of this story. Excellent. So just a few facts and figures um, from 2019, so the past year, about diabetes. Um, so diabetes caused 4.2 million deaths. I mean, that is so many people related to um, something that is largely preventable and reversible. Uh, diabetes caused at least uh, $760 billion um, in healthcare costs. And that's just in the United States. That's just in the United States. And uh, one in five people who are above the age of 65 have diabetes. One in five people. And then lastly, one in two people with diabetes are undiagnosed and I think that that is a really scary fact for a lot of people because you know you realize that people may be going a good portion into their life without making any corrective decisions to change something that they may already have oh my gosh and what that does they may have a heart attack or a stroke before they even know they have diabetes right uh, they may have uh, all kinds of pain and suffering and mistreated by physicians who haven't even checked if they have a blood sugar concern. The problem today, so many people are out of shape and on junk food lifestyles that we literally take for granted that this is a chronic problem that's normal. Uh, when I perused the medical literature from a century ago, the beginning of the 20th century, there was no disease written about called type 2 diabetes. This is a modern disorder mm. that's created from abnormal living yeah and it's it's scary too because of how normalized these sorts of foods have become in our diet and how people eat you know just like you said like you know uh, not many years ago were these foods be like very um very displaced from what we consider normal now yeah. and so you know the normalization of foods that have this content um this high content of sugar these high contents of carbohydrates now it's considered normal and so it's Ironic how now diabetes is very much considered normal. Yeah, it's like outrageous. Years ago, everyone was outraged. We were taking freedom away because the mayor of New York wanted to eliminate sodas that were so big it took two people to carry the damn thing. Where do you <laughs> I think remember this? that. Yeah, remember? <laughs> yep. where, do you, where does diabetes come from? <laughs> now, the British Journal of Medicine reported that the obesity problem that relates directly to diabetic conditions with children in Britain came almost exclusively from mm. them drinking what they call pop, we call soda. Here. Right. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing more uh, heartbreaking when you hear about a child diagnosis of type 2 diabetes just because you know um, that that child, they're not going out and buying their own foods. They're not going out and creating a lifestyle for themselves. They're completely subject to what the parent is doing. So that always you know, breaks my heart. But let's go back into Medical Daily and this article that they just published two days ago about what they're saying are the superfoods, which is a loosely, <laughs> yeah. it's a very loose super term duper. these yes, <laughs> these, <laughs> these days, um, and what they think are the superfoods for diabetics. So we're going to start with legumes. So they're saying that black beans, pinto beans, peas, lentils are some examples of legumes that can stabilize blood sugar, help with healthy digestion, um, with the amount of fiber they provide, um, and also preventing the quick absorption of sugar. So what are your thoughts on this? Well the one thing that they're correct about is that roughage does slow the absorption into the human cell with sugar. Mm -hmm. What they're completely wrong about is when you cook these and eat mm. them in the normal way, quote, they are diabetic producing concerns. Wow. Not Now if you took the same exact beans we have in front of you and you germinated them and sprouted them, literally it would wildly help diabetic conditions, even if they were cooked at that point. Mm. I think that's something that's so missed too, is that like we don't give these beans and these seeds their nutritional value, that they have, that they have the potential for it, but we stop them short by the cooking process without them um, being sprouted. So that's mm -hmm. one thing um, that we would suggest to Medical Daily today. Uh, so the next thing that they recommend as a superfood, Brian, you might have to get out the gavel on this one, but they're, they're saying oatmeal. Oh! Oatmeal, the only thing that's good for is the Quakers, I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> Oatmeal is really a carbohydrate that will shoot up. Just because it's a roughage, they've overshot this one, but it will shoot up your sugar concern. Not a good thing. There are grains that would be helpful, higher protein grains, less carbohydrates. Millet, amaranth, teff, 
buckwheat, quinoa. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I mean, in terms of a, a carbohydrate, oatmeal's pretty high up there, breaks down to simple sugars. I mean, it's kind of beyond me how this one snuck through. So next, we're uh, going to go move on to tomatoes, which they say the vitamin C no, found... No, you said it wrong. Tomato. Oh, tomatoes. I'm, <laughs> I'm very sorry. <laughs> so they're saying that tomatoes, tomatoes, um, the vitamin C found in tomatoes has been shown to bring down elevated blood sugar levels post-meal um, from people with type 2 diabetes. Now, you know, tomatoes are a fruit, for those of you who are unaware. We actually have them on our fruit buffet here on Thursdays, not in our salad buffet. It's a big thing here. You know, we can't use images that have tomatoes in them because we're like, it's bad food combining. You're excommunicated immediately. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a whole thing. You know, we can't find stock images anywhere. So tomatoes, Brian, tell us about what you think tomatoes play their role in um, a diabetic's life. Well, ripe, organic, raw tomatoes are incredibly helpful for cardiovascular disease, prostate cancer, ovarian cancer. There's real evidence in this. Mm -hmm. To say that tomatoes are a great source of vitamin C, they missed the whole thing here <laughs> because sweet organic red peppers are loaded with vitamin C. Mm -hmm. Every day on our buffet here, every day in my life and I'm sure in your life. I love them. Here we take them. <laughs> They're delicious. Uh, and they did refer to research that's true. Adequate amounts of vitamin C within the bloodstream, within the cellular system, can literally help a diabetic, but tomatoes aren't the first choice. Mm, okay, very good point there. So, okay, so moving on, we're going to go hop over to actually a favorite of ours, which is leafy greens. We love leafy greens here at Hippocrates. Um, so they recommend spinach, kale, lettuce, and Swiss chard, among others. Um, and they say that it could possibly lower the risk, possibly yes. lower the risk of type 2 diabetes. Well, what that's about, quite simply, is all nutrition on this planet is captured from the sun on a green leafy plant. So a green leafy vegetable. You remember the term photosynthesis. We all learned that back in school. This is the highest protein food on the planet Earth. So it's the proteins, the amino acids that act like magnets and they capture the sugar and regulate it so it doesn't impact the pancreatic function of the body. Mm. And so this is why our diet is so incredibly effective because this is the highest protein diet in the world that comes from green leafy plants, sprouts and algae, even supplemental algae. And we have all the diabetics carry in their purse or their pocket in a little bag so that when they want a candy bar and they want a smoothie mm -hmm. and they want all these fixes for their blood sugar concerns, they take that within 10 to 15 minutes, mm. the amino acids regulate that. Green juices made with sprouts do the same. So they are partially right. So we'll give a partially right one on this one. <laughs> and you know, as it relates to leafy greens and um, sprouted foods, which we're all about here at Hippocrates in general for the diet, you know, one thing I hear a lot of, and I just have to rant on this for a second, is that, you know, people are like, well, I can't eat, you know, it's too hard to incorporate sprouts into my diet. It's too hard to have salads. I have a little, it's, it always makes me laugh when I see people and they have a little side salad and they're like, look, I had my salad for the day. I'm like, this is going to take me two bites to finish. And you're That's saying good. this qualifies. And so my suggestion for those of you out there who are saying that it's too hard to incorporate, you know, leafy greens and that you don't feel, a lot of times people say they don't feel satisfied eating a salad. It's because their salad is this big. So what I recommend <laughs> <That's right. laughs> is what we do here at Hippocrates. And, you know, if you're doing this at home, take your family salad bowl. Okay. So what you usually use for the entire family and just use that for yourself. That's right. Just for yourself. Put all your greens in there, you know, get some sprouts, you know, get some deliver, whatever you need and make a salad size that you think would probably be good for your entire family. And then I want you to eat the whole thing. Maybe it might take you 30 minutes. You might have to enjoy your food for a while and actually like chew it. And then all of a sudden the amazing thing happens, Brian, that you eat this full salad, this large salad, and then you realize that you're not hungry anymore. You're satiated. Yes. This is what your body was built and meant to eat. This is what I've thrived on for a half a century. How long have you been doing this? Um, for over eight years. So look yeah. at this. I mean, do either of us look like we're dying of deficiency? Do either of us look like we have blood sugar concerns? 
I mean, the sad news is this is so simple, people. You're being misled by charlatans who basically give you drugs and supplements and moderate advice. They are not experts. You're the expert if you just let your instinct come out. And that was great advice. Matter of fact, when I go to even organic restaurants and I order the large salad, they say, well, you can share that with three people. I say, bring me the second one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think it's a big misconception that, you know, people are so used to seeing the small salad size and they think that that's kind of normal, but you have to um, change what normal is for you as it relates to eating your greens. So that's our suggestion here at Hippocrates. So the last thing on their list they said was broccoli and um, they're saying the soluble fiber slows down the absorption of blood sugar. Um, since broccoli is a source of fiber, it prevents the risk of increasing blood sugar levels. So, I mean, we like bro broccoli here at Hippocrates, right? We love broccoli and we love broccoli sprouts. Mm, right? Yes. Many of you don't know that, but you take the top of a broccoli as a flower. And if you dry that, they turn into seeds and you can germinate them just like an alfalfa or a mung bean, the common ones that you all know about. And what's really remarkable is that the power that's in that has a medicine that actually helps diabetic problems, neuropathies, eyesight problems, a circulatory problems. So I'm a big fan of broccoli sprout and a fan of broccoli. Mm -hmm. But broccoli is more difficult for those of you who haven't eaten correctly for many, many years to digest. So it can bring bloating, mm -hmm. bring gas to, to you, etc. So I think they're partially correct on this, so let's give them a half tap. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, just on the note of broccoli sprouts, since you brought it up, Brian, you know, broccoli sprouts are, like we've talked about at Hippocrates, they're one of the most researched um, natural foods in terms of their effects on human health and especially on cancers and other um, illnesses. So why don't you just talk about that for a second? Yeah, I mean, back in 1992, uh, that's 28 years ago, uh, Johns Hopkins came out and said clearly, in all of the years of cancer research, they never found an element that was more effective on wiping out, killing, and preventing every single form of cancer than the medicine sulforaphane mm. they found in broccoli sprouts. It's in broccoli too. It's in cauliflower, it's in cabbage, it's in Brussels sprouts, it's in kale. But in the sprout, it is actually 50 times, five zero times more effective. It also has, a, help for heart, help for the nerves, as we pointed out, help for circulation, help for libido. Wow. We'll give that That's one a round of applause. La, 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 libido. <laughs> We have to get everyone's attention somehow, so that's right. I think that's how, we, that's how we get it. What's this, libido and diabetes? <laughs> they all may want to get diabetes for you. <laughs> okay, so um, just to round it off, so Brian, in terms of what we recommend here at Hippocrates Health Institute for people with diabetes, I mean, we've kind of hit a lot of it, but is there anything else you'd like to add in terms of what they should be incorporating into their diet starting today? So we'll review what we said and then add two or three more little tips on. The number one is that you have to eliminate all animal-based foods. Now many of you say, I don't eat meat, so you think that's the end. How about eggs, which are mm. encapsulated meat, mm -hmm. or just immature meat? <laughs> How about the milk from the bosom of a cow, or a goat, or in some cases a sheep, which is even more fat mm -hmm. than the other two? Uh, how about what we make from the milk? cheese, or yogurt, Ooh. or Greek yogurt, Ooh. or kefir Ooh. for you health guys and yeah. gals out there. All of this is going to encapsulate the cell and prevent sugars that are natural food for propelling energy in the body from entering the cell and being burned up. Mm. Number two, we have to eliminate all forms of sugar. Now, I know there's going to be debate on this because there's a lot of people who d haven't done 64 years of clinical research with probably about 40,000 diabetic type 2s that we have here at Hippocrates. So our medical team observes the blood test and sees the outcome. So once they have that experience, listen to them. If not, please listen to what I have to say. <laughs> Every single form of sugar, including fruit sugar, including not only the fruit sugar that they put into products on the market, including health food products, but I'm talking about what you find in smoothie. And mm. many of you don't know that 
Fruit sugar is the sugar that you have in two things that a lot of people drink a lot of and think is healthy there. Beets, mm. a big part of the world's population actually get their sugar from beets, and yeah. carrots. Mm. So Good avoid points. them. Yeah. And then these other forms of sugars that are out there. They say, oh, I don't eat sugar. I take monk fruit. Look, yes, yeah. I hear that all the time these yeah. days. Look at the, look at the packages. Mm -hmm. On the package, you're going to see they always put a sugar with it because mm -hmm. it's not so sweet. Mm -hmm. The only one that's a great substitute out there for the diabetic is stevia. Yes. And this is you're going to hear dirty words coming from my mouth. <laughs> Processed stevia. Mm -hmm. You don't just take the ground up leaf mm -hmm. because the taste has an aftertaste. Mm -hmm. They take the leaf away, the green part away, and they make it into liquids, and it tastes exactly identical to sugar. It does. Now. The next two or three tips I'm going to give you. Proteins, 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 proteins. Where is the highest protein food on the planet? Here at Hippocrates. Number one is algae. That's green algae, chlorella, blue-green algae, phytoplankton, sea algae. All of these are the highest protein foods. Next highest protein foods and totally digestible, these two. You don't need lots of hydrochloric acid and you won't have a problem with these. Happen to be sprouts. And so many sprouts are complete proteins. Mm -hmm. Mung bean sprouts, Chinese bean sprouts, sunflower green sprouts, flaxseed sprouts, chia seed sprouts, hemp seed sprouts. Amazing. And you say, well, how about the hemp seed? Great, but you're going to struggle to digest it in many of your cases. These are the foods that regulate and help you rapidly rapidly eliminate low blood sugar, hypoglycemia, and high blood sugar diabetic conditions. Again, green leaves have that in it, etc. Uh, pretty much nuts, seeds, grains, and beans have either complete proteins or in great part the essential amino acids or many of the essential amino acids. The next tip I have for you is exercise. It has nothing to do with food. What we see is when people do regular exercise here and they come as diabetics, they can heal two times faster. Just like we said, one half of the diabetics, 50% are not diagnosed, you're walking around with it. Mm, I'm yeah. going to tell you that you'll two times faster reverse it by doing moderate aerobic exercise, weightlifting, stretching exercise. And then if you add on top of that, the last tip, the use of saunas, mm. ideally infrared saunas, or even steam saunas, or regular Scandinavian saunas, that also speeds it up by another 20 to 30%. It's amazing. So we are going to give you the data and statistics we've established here over seven decades now. The longest we see a person who is willing and ready to change their lifestyle to the Hippocrates diet take to reverse their own diabetes. We don't reverse the diabetes. They do by choosing correct diet mm -hmm. and lifestyle habits is six to eight months. Every single year here on the campus of Hippocrates, all of us have seen, Lindsay has seen it, people who have been diabetics for 20 and 30 years are off insulin several dozen every year yeah. within two to three weeks. Please, once again, this has become a money-making machine of deception and nonsense. Again, I'll challenge for the fourth time today, this is not a disease. You get diabetes because of making bad choices. And as you pointed out so beautifully, and I love what she said, her sentiment is the poor children today are two out of three people contracting what I was taught at school was adult onset diabetes. Yeah. It used to take 50 to 60 years of bad living to get type 2 diabetes. Now five and 10 year old kids are suffering because it's five years of bad living because the living is getting a lot worse. This is all remedied by you doing one thing that we all agree with here, becoming responsible. Yes. So until next time, what do we say here, Lindsay? This is Diet Debunked. See you again. <laughs>